you can <laughs> coach up. So the other night, uh, after the Indiana Fever got waxed by the Connecticut Sun, their coach, Christy Sides, said one of the most annoying things that coaches say, which is, you can't coach effort. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of every variety and kind, is wrong. And not only is it wrong, is an indictment of Christy Sides as a coach. As background, not to be unfair to Christy Sides here. Christy Sides was a longtime WNBA assistant. She was very well respected. It was not surprising that she got the Indiana Fever job uh, within the last couple of years. Um, she is someone who was long seen as a future head coach. Um, and that's, that's all fine and dandy. But realistically, Christy Sides uh, seems to be in over her head with Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston, and they have been terrible from a tactical standpoint trying to find the best ways to maximize the number one pick in the most previous two WNBA drafts. But there is also a non-tactical element to the Indiana Fever's uh, debacle-like start of the season that I think actually is evidence for the fact that Sides is telling on herself. And I don't really want to make this about Christy Sides, but there's kind of no other way to go about it since she's the one that said it. She said it. It's on her. But this also applies to every other coach in every other sport. Because ultimately, if there is a player who is not putting forth the effort you want to see, that is on the player, right? If, if everyone else is doing it right, I think the coach is probably doing the things that they need to do. And maybe they haven't found the way to reach that player yet. But culturally speaking, on the largest level, they are doing the types of things to create a standard that says, this is how we play. And if the entire team is not playing to a said standard, or to an acceptable professional winning standard, that is a reflection of the coach. And the idea that you can't coach effort is actually disproven right here in Ashburn, Virginia. How about it for the first time in what feels like forever? Certainly since I've been covering the Washington Commanders, I see how they coach effort here in D.C. When guys don't play with the intensity on the football field that, that is required, they are spoken to about it. There is a, and they also, by the way, find ways to create energy. They find ways to compete to have fun, to make sure that the energy and the vibes and all that kind of stuff that goes into ultimately playing with effort because you're just turned up work. Like they, they found ways to do it. And I think this is true across sports. I don't think this is just a football thing, right? Um, I saw a video earlier today from the University of South Carolina's basketballs, uh, as in Don Staley's team, the women, their strength coach. And they're in the middle of their offseason right now, obviously. And I don't know whether this is from today or this was a video that uh, the, the strength coach put up from during the season. But it, it was just titled Warm Ups. And this is on Instagram. And um, it's the players playing a game where they're like tossing, a, I think it was a lacrosse ball, maybe it was a tennis ball that was like a painted blue or something. Um, but it was some kind of small lacrosse uh, tennis size ball that they would toss uh, around. And they would have to, like, basically, it was kind of like an ultimate Frisbee-looking game where if you got tagged when you had the ball, it was a turnover. And just the idea that you're having fun and competing and there's great energy and that gets you warmed up, ready to go. It gets your competitive juices flowing. And I would guess, uh, as someone who has been around high-level athletics, is both a reporter and a coach uh, for a long time now, that creates better practices because every great practice that I've been to, every great coach that I've been around does these types of things. They find ways to create a standard. Um, one of my favorite sayings along this, one of my favorite coaching mantras is from Sean McVay. Sean it was fond of saying, the standard is the standard, which is to say, this is how we do it. We don't compromise. Either you do it this way or you're not here. And I don't think Sean McVay has this reputation as some kind of dictator of a coach where nobody ever has any fun. And to watch Dan Quinn go through this, to watch Sean when he was here do this, a guy like Kevin O'Connell, the energy he brings. Cliff, I think, has a lot of this to him. Watching him coach, where it's just like, hey, 
this is how it's done. Don't do it the other way. We're going to help you get to this way, and we're not going to accept behavior, especially on the field or on the floor, if we're talking basketball, that is, is not how we do things. And, like, I'll give Eric Tebow credit here, right? The Mystics going into last night's game are 0-12. But there was not a time where you watched them play where they weren't playing hard, playing with effort. There were times they were incredibly sloppy. There were times where I think they were unfocused. But they were also under-talented. Like, that's the problem with the Mystics 0-12 start on the season is they were under-talented. There are times you watch the Indiana Fever play, including Caitlin Clark, where you're just like, that's not professional. That is not professional grade. Clark doesn't get the ball where she wants it, and she kind of does the pouty thing. And she did it at Iowa, too. You get away with it at Iowa. And the Iowa coaches, by the way, eventually coached it out of her in a big way. She's way better than she was when she was a younger player. But you you have to keep playing. Like, now you're not going to be able to make it up in 20 seconds. You're not going to be able to pout, push off, go get the ball, drain a step back three with the ease you did at Iowa. She still does it on a regular basis. It's sick. She's an ultra-talented player. It's not meant to be like a bash Caitlin Clark segment, for sure. But she's a part of the problem they have there. But I don't think it's actually Caitlin. That's the thing. I look at what Caitlin does, and if I was the coach there, um, and I hate to do that, if, if there was a better coach there, because I, I can't coach WNBA basketball. Let's, let's not become that guy. But if there is a better coach there, if there is someone who is a better people manager there, because I'm sure that Christy Sides has tactic – uh, stuff up her sleeve. That she's a very, very smart basketball mind, and you've actually already seen that. You've seen the fever improve and find ways to get Clark off the ball, make life a little easier for her. Try to find ways to use their personnel better as they finally got a chance to practice. They've evolved a little bit as a basketball team, but the stuff that hasn't changed with them is the stuff that if there was a better people manager, a higher caliber of coach there would not fly. It would not have made it into the first game. Nevertheless, the 12th, 13th, 14th that whatever we're about to be in now for Indiana. And that would mean that group would be more successful and be having a lot more fun. They'd be under a lot less scrutiny. And it's the kind of thing that gets you fired as a coach. It's kind of what got Wes, not kind of, it is what got Wes Unseld fired. You know, Wes, I think, was kind of of the same, like, hey, you can't coach effort. And Brian Keefe came in and he coached effort. Now, I think as a coach, often first you want to coach tactics and then you want to coach intensity because you want to make sure they have the tactics down. But sometimes you just need to let a fire under a team. Sometimes you have to make sure that like, hey, make a mistake, but make it quickly and keep playing. Don't pout. Keep going. Don't give up. Compete. And ultimately in pro sports, if a group of players doesn't respond to that, those players will be gone. But if it keeps happening, or you know the players have it in them. Because Clark is competitive as hell. Aaliyah Boston is competitive as hell. Nalissa Smith, all those players, these are the best of the best. The WNBA is the best 144 women's basketball players on the planet, bar none. 144 jobs in that league. And there are 200-something caliber WNBA players probably in the world. They could easily interchange. That league is full of the most competitive people in the world in that sport. And if you can't help them channel that competitiveness in the same way that an NFL coach, an NBA coach, etc., if you can't help them channel that, if you don't create a standard and a culture that says, this is how we do it, Our competitive spirit is channeled into productivity these ways, and these things that take away from our ability to compete are not allowed. That is, ultimately, if it's a group of them, if it's the whole team, not a reflection of the players. It is a reflection of the coach. And so, Christy Sides, yikes, yikes, yikes. You done told on yourself. And I really, really do wonder if the Fever continue to struggle, maybe into the Olympic break, if there are not changes in the front office and or the coaching staff either this year or quickly after this season because, wow, what an insane thing to say into a microphone. 
Speaking of things that people said into microphones, real things real people said into real microphones wraps up our show next.